So I came across an NVIDIA marketing email yesterday and that was in regards to the RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU and also the RTX 3050 laptop GPU. So two variants there and this caught my interest because I had been looking for a budget laptop which I could be a little bit more portable with the camera setup. So as you can see there, that camera that I'm shooting to goes to the desktop PC behind me and yeah, this is pretty much very fixed in position. So if I had a laptop, it would be a little bit more portable but uh, anyway I decided to check out these laptops um, because I thought well you know the email said that these were priced starting at $799 so I thought that was a pretty good deal and so why not let's take a look at these specs and see what we've got here okay if you like this video make sure to click the like button also to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and we also have a discord server so come along and join us in the chat room there and i'll leave a link in the description below if you want the marketing and the official word on the rtx 3050 ti and the rtx 3050 you can check out nvidia's news post about this on their website and you can get all the hype including stuff like two times nvidia dlss and compared to gtx 10 series laptops an astonishing four times boost in gaming and two and a half times performance in video editing but let's go over to videocars.com so we can get the actual specs on the RTX 3050 and there's a couple of key specs here. The first one is obviously how fast this GPU is compared to the other laptop GPUs. And you can see that the 3050 Ti has 2560 CUDA cores while the 3050 has 2048 CUDA cores. Most of the Ampere cards have had boost clocks around 1700 MHz. So just by looking at the CUDA cores, you can roughly work out how fast these cards are compared to ones that are already out. So with the 3050 Ti with 2560 CUDA cores, that's about 66% of the performance of the 3060. And the 3050 is probably around 53% of the performance of the 3060. Or to put it in other words, if the 3060 is getting 100 frames per second, you're looking at around 66 frames per second on the 3050 Ti and 53 frames per second on the 3050. If you look at Tech Power Up's relative performance chart, 66% of the 3060 puts the 3050 Ti around about the GTX 1650 super level performance. Now, I think the 3050 Ti should be a fair bit stronger than a 1650 super level card given this is basically a generation jump. So I'd expect around 70 to 75% of the 3060 mobile, which would probably put this around a GTX 1660 or GTX 1660 Super level of performance. From NVIDIA's own charts for Call of Duty Warzone, NVIDIA reports that the RTX 2060, which is the desktop variant, this has similar performance to an RTX 3060 mobile. This averages around 100 FPS. And in this new chart that they just released, the RTX 3050 Ti averages around 80 FPS. So just 20% less performance than the 3060 mobile, even though the CUDA core count is 34% less. So as you can see there, there is a chance that uh, the 3050 Ti will probably be a little bit stronger than the CUDA core count suggests. In terms of tensor cores, which is mostly used for DLSS calculations, on the RTX 3050 Ti, you're looking at around 80 tensor cores versus the 120 you're getting on the 3060 and 64 on the 3050. I don't think that should be a problem given you might be playing at higher resolutions on the RTX 3060 mobile, while on the 3050 Ti, you're probably playing at 1080p anyway, so the tensor cores should scale reasonably well and DLSS will perform well enough. In terms of ray tracing cores, the 3050 Ti has 20 ray tracing cores and the 3050 has 16. So I don't think anyone should expect anything too exciting in terms of ray tracing from these mid-tier GPUs. As you've seen from my ray tracing videos recently on Cyberpunk and Control, ray tracing is really demanding. So going forward, you might be able to get some low to medium ray tracing reflections out of these cards, which should give you a taste of what ray tracing has to offer. The power budget of the 3050 Ti drops versus the 3060, so here it's between 35 to 80 watts. So the good news is that you might actually get some decent gaming time out of the laptop. Maybe a couple of hours instead of a single hour playing with a 3080 GPU laptop. Now we come to the main problem with these GPUs and that is the low memory bus width and also the low amount of VRAM. 
The 128-bit bus width will give about half the memory bandwidth we see in 256-bit cards today, so we're looking at around 224 gigabytes per second. Given the 3070 with 448 gigabytes per second seems reasonable for 1440p gaming, 224 gigabytes per second should be okay for 1080p gaming, given it's about half the amount of pixels. Expect frame rate drops if going to a higher resolution. The 4GB of VRAM is an eyebrow raiser. Many games these days use a lot more VRAM than that, even at 1080p resolution. Game developers will design games for the largest audience possible, and the largest PC audience is by far on desktop, where the latest cards are a minimum of 6GB, if not 8GB. Even 8GB is tight if you want to play the latest games, for example playing Resident Evil Village, which by no means is that intensive of a next-gen game, I could easily use up all 8GB on my RTX 3070 just by selecting mostly high settings and using a 3GB texture pack. The game offers an 8GB texture pack which would have put my VRAM usage over 12GB which is more than the RTX 3080 and the upcoming RTX 3080 Ti. Going through some of the other games I played, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Control, Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead Redemption 2, they all use around 68GB of memory even at 1080p. Alright, what this means is a few things. One is if you do end up getting this laptop, you're going to have to dial down the settings somewhat in the newer games. So you're going to have to use medium to low settings in many of these games so that you're going to get under that 4GB of VRAM. Otherwise, your frame rate is going to drop significantly if you're over that 4GB amount. And I think the situation will only get worse with newer games. Secondly, these laptops with these RTX 3050 Ti's and 3050's are clearly built with a specific audience in mind, and that is the audience that plays mass market games like Dota 2 and League of Legends and Fortnite and Apex Legends, and those games will handle 4GB of VRAM just fine, especially if you're playing at 1080p and medium settings, and you're going to get DLSS boost on Fortnite for example, so you're going to be fine with the performance in those games. And those games have a huge audience, so they're going to sell tons of these laptops anyway. So if you're going to play those games, I think that would be fine to get one of these laptops for. So if you want a laptop to play the latest games like Assassin's Creed or Cyberpunk 2077, I would recommend a laptop with at least 6GB of VRAM, like an RTX 3060 GPU. And I think even though it's only got 2GB of VRAM more, I think that's at least enough so that you don't have to play everything at the lowest settings. And you know, some games might not even work with 4GB of VRAM and you're just going to need more. And so I think if you want to play the latest games, make sure to get an RTX 3060 or above. And if you look at some of these prices, there are some 3060 laptops that are cheaper than a 3050 Ti laptop. So you just need to do a bit of shopping around when you go and buy your laptop. And as for the other GPU that we talked about, the RTX 3050, well, that looks to be about 20% less performance than the 3050 Ti. So make sure you keep that in mind when you go and make your purchase. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.